everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our episode is brought to you by UCAN. Today, we have Dex Hopkins and Adrian Conway here to discuss whether standardized programming helps or hurts attendance at semifinals. Guys, for this one, it's going to be what Dex would call the Wild West. Let's just jump into it to get your initial opinions on whether we think that the standardized programming that we'll see this year is going to increase attendance or uh, maybe prevent people from going. Dex, I'll let you start with this one. I think it increases it, man. I think anything that, uh, you know, I think we're going to have more centrally located things. It seems like the path is clearer to the games through the season now with what they've given us so far. And so this is brings me back to – regional days when you know the luck of the draw was going first or last so you could get like the nobody knows how to do this well or you <laughs> you get the best strategy because you've had the longest kind of sample size to see people do it and so that then there were world records i remember 2017 they had like a crazy team workout uh with the deadlift hold and ghds remember that one adrian mm -hmm. and we had the world record in that one i think you guys had went before us so like it, it adds a bunch of layers for athletes and the spectators like there's world records and it's like legitimate now there's no you know, kind of wild cards for that. And everybody's doing the same, the same races. So I, I think it's a good thing. Adrian, what are your thoughts? I love it. You know, there's, there, there, there are pieces of last year that I enjoyed, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of CrossFit. I love constantly varied elements of our sport. However, now that I've got an opportunity to kind of step to the other side of the camera and, and commentate or cover or, or be on here and be fortunate enough to talk <laughs> fitness with y'all. It's like, I, I understand the value of telling a clear story throughout a season. And this yeah. allows us to do that from the backside. So it actually lets our jobs as, you know, specialists in the field, but it also allows fans to be better fans. Like they're going to show up to the games now once the field is set and actually understand like, yo, so-and-so should do really well in this versus mm -hmm. the field, because look at where their score is stacked up. And I think from an analytical perspective, it cleans things up a lot for what we can do. So thank you. Cause it helps us. Right. right. What I'll say about <laughs> us. The, the semifinals this year is like, Oh my goodness. To me, we're going to get in the United States, three CrossFit games this year. Right. Because of the way that it's going to play out with the volume of athletes, with the number of tickets that are going to get punched uh, from each semifinal um, and, and really the the uh, the level of competition that we're going to get to see from the two that are here stateside. And then, of course, at the games when everybody comes to party. So for me, I don't know if it's just the standardized program that's going to increase the turnout, but I think these things are going to be pumping. They're going to be a party. It's going to be exciting. And. You know, I, when we look back on last year, I think we're going to say, wow, we really whiff of just keeping it how it was before we got to this new, you know, new new standard of a, a whole season. Um, but I am specifically just like everything that Dex shared. I am a big fan of of, you know, the ability for fans to show up, for family to show up, people that might not even be CrossFitters and just have a better understanding of like, oh, man, so and so did really good, even even though I don't know what a good time for that workout is i know that when i look at these other 30 results wow they're really set apart so i love it um i think it's great for the sport i think it'll be great for the excitement and turnout at the semis right and in theory the times or the weightlifting numbers should get better or faster each week because athletes will have something to chase mm -hmm. in theory in theory yeah i, th I think <laughs> this this brings an element back to crossfit.com og stuff yeah. Right. And I say that because a lot of people, yeah, leaderboarding, it brings the magic out of everybody, right? Like we can go back to the leaderboard, who knows how many years ago, 2003, 2004, long before I was even thinking about CrossFit. And we can look at scores and people post on sports and, and being like, yo, you're lying for sure. Can't do oh, that because yeah. I did that on there. <laughs> a, a, a different way. Right? They're calling each other out. And then, and then lo and behold, like, but they were like, okay, bet I'm about to go do this workout and beat that score. Even though I know he's lying, he had the shortest reps. Right. But then they actually surpass these people from across the globe. And it's only because the standard was officially set in a particular way. So it really, I think honestly allows the cream to continue to rise and puts a better show for us on every week because they're like, okay, so that's, that's possible. And when I even demoed this workout, I didn't think that kind of score was possible. So now I've got to find a way to better that because I know other people in my area, my semifinal are going to be close to that score too. So I, I mean, as an athlete, there's some pros and some cons, but from a spectator perspective, I, I really like it. 
When we talk specifically about the programming and how that possibly does sway uh, fans from attending, um, do you think that ticket sales actually improve based on programming? Like, for example, Josh Bridges and Chris Spieler are programming Rogue, but do you think that there's a group of people out there that are going to the in-person event specifically to see the programming? This episode is brought to you by You Can. Who can? You can. At least I can with You Can with one of their easy squeeze pouches that give me the energy I need to get through my workout without causing a crash. When I work out early in the morning but don't want to on an empty stomach because we know mid one I'm going to be hangry, I grab one of their super easy on the stomach bars. Chocolate almond butter, uh, yes please. I may not be a games athlete, yet, but you can helps me stay focused and energized during my workouts. It delivers steady release carbs for long lasting energy without spiking blood sugar levels. The key to sustaining peak performance and focus and recording videos like these. Trusted by top CrossFit pros like Scott Panchik and Emily Rolf, get your hands on these goodies and even save 20% on your first order with our code CHALKUP. Link in the description. Now back to the episode. And I think we got a, there's a usual recipe, right? Everybody wants to come see the big lift. There's usually a drag race. It's a, you can almost call out the photo finish events. To, to me, it was always the days, right? Friday, uh, who's off work? Mm. Saturday, packed house. Sunday, packed house. And so yep. that, that was more a determiner of who's going to be there to me is kind of the, you know, cause you got to think like, especially now with the, the era of full-time athletes. Uh, these folks still got jobs like the, the meat and potatoes people, the majority, not this 0.0001%. Those people still got jobs. Those jobs get off at five probably unless, you know, you take, yeah. take some PTO to come watch fitness. But, um, you know, so that was always a, dicta- a, a dictating thing for it for me. But, yeah, I mean, I think if there's announced things, especially after the first week and you can see the fireworks, well, we know the show's coming again. So now we can plan to go to the next one. So nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think, you know, it's very obvious with the days of the week thing, the 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 flow of the crowd. That's certainly going to be a limitation. But in regards to do people come to show up because Chris and Josh programmed Rogue? I don't think so. Um, just from a very honest perspective, right? Like who programmed it don't matter to me. I'm coming to watch the athletes compete. And I believe that most fans are going to be that way, right? Like so the lineup matters. So when the lineup matters, the money matters. And to athletes, I do believe the programming can matter also. So if this ain't the CrossFit games and they think some jerk that just wants to program hard workouts is responsible for rogue, they ain't coming, right? They're not going to come. And it don't even matter if they can win 20 grand for last place because they're going to be like, well, this is going to injure my season. This is going to create risk. So there certainly is a storyline to understand where it's like, okay, programming does matter. But from a fan's perspective, the biggest influence to me comes from like time of day, day of the week, location, but more importantly, those athletes that show up but I do think the programming does dictate a little bit of who's coming and if they're coming annually or if they were like, yo, that was a terrible experience. My back, my legs, my hips, right? I didn't recover from rogue this year because <laughs> uh, X, Y, and Z, and I wasn't ready for the open. That would deter future, you know, presence. And then that would affect the crowd. So in a roundabout way, yeah, no. <laughs> so then when it comes to like standardized programming for semifinals, you guys don't necessarily think that it will even have any type of impact on the turnout or the crowds, like whether it was standardized or not. No, I don't think so. I think the lineup thing is a huge point. Um, You know, like Adrian said, if there's some guy just trying to wreck people, like I used to think of Dubai in that light um, because some of the stuff they put, I remember one year you had to do an underwater kettlebell push in a pool. (laughs) Yeah, that was a thing. Hey, if they die, they die. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Guys will die no oxygen, oxygen great, tank great down yeah, there. Yeah, great, great quote. <laughs> but I think the lineup's important. And then uh, that's what I—that's what we thought last year, right? Like there's all this variance. And what we saw with the athletes, you know, with the lineup being a big deal, they were picking. Because I know this event, Granite Games going to be outside. I know Mac is yep. long and very mixed modal. I know, you know, Syndicate was kind of a wild card last year, but it's same people uh, and, and doing that. But, yeah, so then you get them kind of picking and choosing when you have the seating. And with this – it's not, you know, we're going to know who's going where you're going to be able to pick. And then the, the program will be pretty straightforward. So yeah. yeah, the lineup is a good point though. That's uh especially at rogue, man, especially with people coming in and out and they can get in and their visa stuff. So yeah, yeah that's a, that's the best point to me besides the days. Yeah. Yeah. And lineup is big. I, to answer your question, Lauren, I, th- I think that this year standardized programming 
won't affect the number of butts in the seats, but it will affect the excitement in the seats. And again, I, I say that because I think we are still trying to teach and trying to learn how to be better fans of the sport of CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And now that there's a bit of a predictability there, again, with anticipation of like, yo, so-and-so, yo, did y'all see Madeiras last week? He put this time up. They really think that, you know, um, so-and-so is going to beat that time this, this week. Well, I can't wait to watch it. There's an anticipation because it's not like, you know, I have to be honest. What I love most about CrossFit is the, the constantly varied aspect as an athlete, because I'm training for everything all the time. But when it comes to being a spectator, that can be one of the biggest obstacles for us to really grow the sport is because people turn it on. They're like, I don't know what I'm watching. I don't know what's good. I don't know who's leading. Sometimes they're trying to get better about that. Um, but so I think this, this adds like there will be anticipation and a, and a, and a feel in the environment, because if you guys remember back and I got to experience this a couple times traveling to different semis last year, it's like those two workouts that were already set for all the semis, like people, people's hands were sweaty. They Engaged. were excited. They were standing up. They knew yeah. what was coming or they knew what to expect. So I think they're, you know, we're going to get the, the diehards and the committed fans out there all the same because of the lineups this year. But that programming, I think, will add some some necessary anticipation to every event. Mm -hmm. And then even like what I'm getting from what you're saying, Adrian, is that regardless of whether it's in person or people are watching from home, more eyeballs are going to want to watch the semifinals. In my opinion, yes. I mean, it's, it'll be more an educated spectator, right? Like there's a reason – you know, October baseball is October baseball. Exactly. Right? No, so and true. I, and, and, and I'm not a baseball fan, but in October, I'm watching. NBA finals, I might not catch every regular season game. LeBron's not playing the whole game. But in the finals, playoffs, I'm watching. And now we'll have a playoffs we'll to the championship, and it'll be a clear road. And, like, I mean, I think absolutely that turns up engagement, especially, like, across the season. And I think the more, you know, if we're trying to go to the legitimizing it as a professional sport and all those things, that track's got to be clear and it's got to be consistent. And I know there's a lot of grace for figuring those roads out and, and what it looks like for the, the perfect system. And so, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction for it. Mm. Adrian, what's your bottom line? My bottom line is I can't wait for this standardized programming. I can't <laughs> wait for these semifinals. Um, there's going to be some back push, some pushback. You know, there's going to be some people that are like, ah, that's boring and ah, this and that. And I'm going to tell you that the positives that we are going to get from them delivering the standardized programming is in droves going to outweigh the negatives that people will bring to the table. So I can't wait. Dex, what's your bottom line? That's a good thing. Uh, standardized race. That's what it is. So now the, the players can play. You can learn from the week before you. Spectators can be more engaged. I think there's there's no negatives to this. And like you said, there'll be pushback for sure, but it's not going to be. It'll be very like your favorite color is different than mine. I don't like it. So, <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's so true. Mm -hmm. And a uniform way to qualify for the CrossFit Games. And world records are back, baby. Come on. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Adrian was onto something when he was like, as like an analyst, that is something that was so much fun with the two standardized tests this past year. It was we were waiting to see those because you could compare from from semifinal to semifinal. Well, it's the hardest oh, yeah. stuff too, right? Like if we're a progression based thing, like that rope climb one, I would I was at regionals the first year. Adrian was mm -hmm. at regionals. It was brutal, and it, to complete it for a lot of people, it was yeah. not the drag race it was this year. So you mm -hmm. can see, I mean, you think of like watching old NFL film things to the progression of the game now. That's what we're, that's what you get to build. And we're still a young sport. And so seeing it like 2014 to now completely different event, like almost some people would have said a toss out, but it's, it's just, it's cool to see the progression. You're able to do that when these things are, are standardized. So, yeah, I love it. More statistics. Right. And again, like from, yeah. from our back end at the CrossFit games, and we're trying to tell a clear story when we're trying to get people excited and we're trying to help them understand what's to come in an event or recapping one. This year we were taken from two scores. We're we're trying to predict like an endurance event, having to look years back, like, okay, wait, we got we got this data and this data. And you know, this year we're gonna have at least six, likely, maybe more. Who knows? Uh scores to compare for all 40 on each side that show up. And it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be a good time. Adrian, Dex, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.